Good day everyone, this is Lesson 1.3 Fibonacci Sequence and Golden Ratio and I would like to share with you this PowerPoint for our lesson this uh, time. Fibonacci Sequence and the Golden Ratio. Sequence is an ordered list of numbers called terms that may have repeated values. The arrangement of these terms is set by a definite rule. For example, in this uh, sequence, A1, 10, 100, and 1000, the sequence is defined by the rule that the term before uh, the next term will be the first term times 10. So 1, 1 times 10, 10, 10 times 10, 100, 100 times 10, 1000. On the sequence B, we find 2, 5, 9, 14, and 20. We could see that the pattern is quite different compared to the first one. We could tell that the pattern could be 2 plus 3, that's 5. 5 plus 4, that's 9. 9 plus 5, that's 14. 14 plus 6, that's 20. So the pattern actually is adding incremental values. The next one is 16, 32, 64, 128. 16 times 2 is 32. 32 times 2 is 64. 64 times 2 is 128. So the pattern actually is the previous value times the next or times 2. In the sec sequence, letter D, we find the first value as 1. The second value, the second term is 1. The third term is 2. The next term is 3, 5, and 8. So we could see that the first value 1 and the second term 1 and the third term 2 is just equal to the uh, sum of the first term and the second term. The next term 3 is equal to the sum of the second term and the third term. The next value 5 is just 3 plus 2, which is the sum of the previous two terms. The next value 8 is the sum of the previous two terms, 5 and 3. This sequence actually is called the Fibonacci sequence. Fibonacci 0 is 0, Fibonacci 1 is 1. Thus, Fib 2 is 0 plus 1, which is equal to 1. Fib 3 is 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2. So this is the Fibonacci numbers. Fibonacci actually, or the Fibonacci numbers, was developed by the Italian mathematician Leonardo Pisa. Leonardo Pisa is the true name of the mathematician many known as Fibonacci. Fibonacci is a nickname stemming from Filius Bonacci, meaning son of Bonacci. He is most well known for the Fibonacci sequence and numbers, and he was born in Italy and ended in Italy as well. He spent his younger years in North Africa. So, what are some usage of the Fibonacci sequence? One known story is about the story of the mathematics of Rabbit Island. Okonoshima Island in Japan is also known as Rabbit Island for a very good reason. It is inhabited by numbers of wild rabbits which have been known to chase tourists and stampede around in large flocks. The island has become a popular destination for tourists and there are lots of videos on YouTube showing the rabbits, rabbits unusual behavior. For example, Look at the video of a woman being chased by the rabbit with this link that you could click on the page of our module. So Rabbit Island was used as a site for producing chemical weapons during the Second World War. It was subsequently abandoned due to health concerns and no one is sure where rabbits came from. One theory is that the rabbit escaped from being tested at the chemical weapons establishment and another theory suggests that rabbits were released by school children in 1970. One thing for certain is that the rabbits have no predators on the island and they can breed without any pesky foxes getting in their way. In 1202, Italian mathematician Fibonacci posed a mathematical rabbit problem. In his book, Liver Acci, or the Book of Calculations, he wondered how many rabbits would be produced in perfect circumstances. I, for example, where there are no predators such as Rabbit Island. So Fibonacci posed the theoretical problem as follows. 
Imagine you have a pair of rabbits, one male, one female. In a field, how many rabbits would they reproduce after one year? Fibonacci made the following assumptions. First, no rabbits die or are eaten by predators. Two, each female reproduced every month, starting from the second month that she is alive. And every time the female reproduces, she gives birth to one pair of rabbits, one male and one female. So let us look at how the numbers of rabbits grow. The first pair of rabbits, just the original one, there is still just one pair of rabbits at the start of the month by the end because it's, uh, they are yet incapable of having offspring from the second generation. By the end of the month, they have produced one more pair to make two pairs. In this month or in the third month, only the original pair can breed, making a lot, a total of three pairs by the end of the month. In the fourth month, the first two pairs can breed, making a total of three plus two, which is equal to five pairs by the end of the month. In the fifth month, the first three pairs can now breed, making a total of five plus three pairs, which is equal to eight at the end of the month. In the sixth month, the first five pairs can now breed, making a total of eight plus five pairs by the end of the month. Thus, develop the Fibonacci sequence. So this is how Fibonacci uh, developed his uh, principle of the Fibonacci sequence. So Leonardo might have discovered the sequence as he was trying to make a hypothesis on how rabbits breed or bred and reproduce. So a new pair of rabbit is born each month and this new pair in turn gives birth to additional pairs of rabbits beginning at the two months after they was born. F sub zero is one, F one is one, F two is two, F three is three, F four is five, and so on and so forth. Thus developing once again the Fibonacci sequence. And you know what? There are many examples of Fibonacci numbers in nature. The sunflower, the shell of um, the snail, as we have mentioned earlier, the cones, and a one uh, type of, uh, what do you call this, cacti, produces Fibonacci numbers in the patterns of its seeds or its shell or its fruit. So this is the Fibonacci number. The question is, what is Fib sub n or the n term? So Fib n is equal to Fib n minus 1 plus Fib n minus 2 for n is greater than or equal to 3. So Fib 6 actually is just Fib 5 plus Fib 4. Fib 4 is just Fib 3 plus Fib 2. So let's try this one. List the Fibonacci sequence up to Fib 20. So we have 1, then 1 again, then 2, 3, 5, 8, so on and so forth. And if we are able to write that down, we could solve what is Fib 19. All right, let's go back to this example later on as we discuss synchronous in our synchronous meeting. So there is one formula developed by Binet. Binet's formula is as follows. The following formula is known as the Binet's formula for the nth Fibonacci number. The nth Fibonacci number is equal to 1 over square root of 5 times 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 raised to the n minus 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 raised to the n. The advantage of this formula over the recursive formula fn is equal to fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2 is that we could determine the n Fibonacci numbers without finding the two preceding Fibonacci numbers. In short, I could calculate Fib 20 even though I do not know Fib 19 and Fib 18. I could calculate Fib 40 without knowing Fib 39 and Fib 38. So with this, they realize the golden ratio. The golden ratio is phi 
symbol in Greek, as it is shown in the left, is a special number approximately equal to 1.618. It appears many times in geometry, art, architecture, and other areas. That is why it is oftentimes called as the ratio of the god or golden ratio. You could see the golden ratio in Mona Lisa, in the Pantheon, in the Notre Dame. The idea behind this is that we find the golden ratio when we divide the line into two parts so that the long part divided by the short part is also equal to the whole length divided by the long part. Again, the long part, which is A, divided by the short part as B is just equal to A plus B, the entire length, over A. And if we solve this formula, we find 1.618 which is the golden ratio. They say that the golden ratio is the ratio of beauty. This rectangle has been made using the golden ratio and looks like a typical frame for painting. However, some artists and architects believe that the golden ratio makes the most pleasing and beautiful shape. Many buildings and artworks have golden ratio in them, such as Pantheon in Greece but it's not really known if it was designed that way. <clears throat> the golden ratio actually is equal to 1.68, so on and so forth. The digits keep going on and going on with no pattern. In fact, the golden ratio is known to be an irrational number and it meant that it is never repeating, never ending decimal. So other names of the golden ratio is the golden section, the golden mean, the golden number, divine proportion, divine section, and golden proportion. Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio is somewhat linked. There is a special relationship between them. So if we evaluate the Fibonacci number, the next number is found by adding the two numbers before it. And here is what we see. If we divide the bigger number with the smaller number, as we go from Fib 1, Fib 2, Fib 3, so on and so forth, the ratio is going closer and closer and closer to the Fibonacci or to the golden ratio. So if we divide Fib 99 with Fib 98, it is somewhat closer to 1.618. The pentagram, uh, this is not a witchcraft, no? the pentagram is more famous as a magical or holy symbol and it has also a golden ratio in it. AB and CD all have golden ratios. The ratio of beauty, as they say. So the golden ratio is the growth rate of the Fibonacci sequence as n gets large. So Euclid in elements give the first recorded definition of the golden ratio. So we find this one, n, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, until 12. And the golden ratio raised to the n over fib n is equal to square root of five. So later on they realize that fib n is almost equal to the golden ratio raised to the n over square root of five. So instead of solving for the n term, we could use the golden ratio in finding the Fibonacci number. So for example, Fib 6. Fib 6 is just equal to the golden ratio raised to the 6 over square root of 5. While Fib 13 is just equal to the golden ratio, that's 1.6, raised to the 13 over square root of 5. And 
we could solve even FIV 100, which is the golden ratio times raised to 100 over square root of 5. And this is FIV 100. So, later on, we would have more examples or finding Fibonacci numbers on our exams and on our synchronous meeting. So this is the end of module one. Thank you for being part of this lesson and have a good day.